Just hold tight, dude. What's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? Hello, hello, everybody. Hola, amigos. What's up, Mario? How you doing? Everything going smooth, Mike. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. So, uh, well, Mario, this is our first time doing a uh, it's kind of a webinar together. Uh, yeah, first time. Can you hear me okay? Everything okay? Just want to make sure everything's good. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll go over some of the, uh, the things that we're going to be talking about. And uh, what's up, uh, is it Kaylin? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, yeah. You probably know how to read that, right? Uh, Hugo, what's going on? Hugo, how you doing, man? Hugo. Mm -hmm. Hugo Hurt. Everything is good. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, so, ask, ask, ask the people if the audio is good, if they can yeah, hear is, is, Yeah, is the audio good, ladies and gentlemen? So uh, we are a stinker for, for audio. Um, so it's exciting. We're going to be uh, trying to keep this, probably this whole presentation within an hour, hopefully. And um, But if it goes longer, then that's a good thing. 
and I've got people trying to message me as we go. So um, let me just uh, go back. Let me get let me get things straightened out here. So that way we we're gonna get on point. Listen, okay, real quick. This is this is generally for a beginners. If you if you feel a little lost, you know, purchasing which tools to buy, um, or you're thinking about buying a tool package. I think the number one mistake, and Mario agrees, is that we get a lot of people to ask us, which tool package should I buy? And mm -hmm. really, they kind of skipped a big step. And the step that we're trying to show you right now is, okay, you can buy tools, that's great, but you actually know, need to know how to use them and what their purpose is for those tools are for. That would be you buy smarter, and you're going to save a lot, a lot of money. Absolutely. So we're not going to try to confuse you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to just essentially try to give you five good tools to work with. Now, Mario, you want to you want to add or you know, summarize just that what I said maybe we'll for the Spanish people. Uh, yeah, I will summarize for the Spanish guys. Uh, bueno, amigos, lo que estamos tratando de hacer en este momento es mostrarles a ustedes una guía, una hoja de ruta para saber exactamente qué herramientas debemos comprar cuando estamos iniciando nuestra carrera como técnico hospedero. Entonces vamos a ser muy específicos, tratar de mostrarles las categorías y avanzar en cada uno de estos temas de la forma más eh, concreta para poder avanzar y que ustedes nos entiendan perfectamente. All right, Mike. Can... Okay, cool. So let me, we're going to try to make this very streamlined and organized as possible. So if you're in the market of buying tools, you probably have already seen some of the tools that I have on Ultra, or excuse me, on uh, YouTube. I talk about my five tools um, I really don't go super crazy in depth um, to top 10 tools. That's a good good set of tools to purchase. But but I'm going to walk you guys through along with Mario about, you know, what tools you should buy and why. Okay. We're going to have steps and tiers of webinars here to take you by your hand. Meanwhile, if you if you just can't help yourself and you can't stand it, which is a good thing, you want to go to denttrainer.com because that's where all the details are at, right? Why you're doing certain things at, at, a, at a certain pace. So, but nonetheless, let's, let's get into this. Okay. Right. Um, so let me, let me go over what you're going to learn in this, in this progress here in this, uh, Bueno, amigos. Okay. Do you hear me well, Mike? Para nuestra comunidad en español, aquí tenemos la mayoría de temas que vamos a abordar. ¿Por qué comprar herramientas en este momento? ¿Qué está incluido? ¿Por qué deberías comprar herramientas de la forma correcta? Los handles de 3 a 5 herramientas que deberías comprar. ¿sí? Principalmente eso para nuestra comunidad latina. Son algunos de los temas que vamos a desarrollar. ¿Vale? Entonces, de esa forma podremos saber puntualmente cómo poder avanzar en nuestro, en nuestro progreso de principiantes. Adicionalmente tenemos accesorios que debemos conseguir, muy importantes, eh, tips que nos sirve para práctica en paneles y capos y al final vamos a tener un Q&A que es una sesión de preguntas y respuestas, ¿vale? Entonces la idea de este, de este live es que podamos profundizar en estos aspectos de forma básica y con eso ustedes puedan saber a dónde estamos orientados sobre qué herramientas debemos conseguir. Y sobre esto podremos saber puntualmente que al final del día se trata de entender los pasos para poder llegar a un nivel que queremos en el sistema PDR y no eh, empezar de, o sea, de, de atrás para adelante. Es decir, no saltarse estos pasos porque al final, si queremos llegar a un nivel de, de, digamos, de reparación alto, debemos entender que esto lleva un procedimiento y que así mismo debemos llevarlo a cabo y no saltarnos absolutamente nada. Ok. Uh, are you there, Mike? I think that uh, I, ju I just uh, sum up everything about this uh, uh, aspects, uh, the major aspects. Major aspects of... 
what we are going to talk about. So uh, the Latino community already are uh, in in touch with them. With them. Yeah. Hey, Mario, are you are you getting a clear picture, or because someone says that they weren't getting a picture? So, so you you okay? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Of me. Yeah. Can you just as long as you, you can see me, right? And yeah, it's everything I can see you right fine. there. I can see you okay. right there. I just hear a little bit of uh, 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 noise, like a little, um, yeah, some some minor. Um, okay. Right there. Well, we're gonna roll with it. So I'm gonna. Okay, right. This is live, and this is what it is. So right. okay. It is where it is. All right. Let's go. Okay, so let's get going. Like, I, I don't want to take too long on each thing because we've got a lot of stuff to cover, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we've got a, another camera too. So we're going to talk. Mike. Mike, we're going to get into a lot. You're out of your audio. Mike, I can hear you. I can hear you. Now. Can you hear me now? No, no. How about now? Yeah, right there, right there. There you go. I'm just gonna talk. I'm just gonna use my microphone on my on my Mac. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not gonna yeah. go. Way better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just seguimos, amigos, amigos. No se me desconcentren. Vamos a seguir concentrados. Listo? Okay. Vamos. Okay. Hold on, just a second, too. I'm gonna check something real quick before we go. Oh, I know. No mames. Okay, hold on. Let me check it out. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to hear the audio. I, I've told you I'm freaking. You 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 were just right. If you can go with that audio, it will be just fine. All right, let's do that. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. oh, that irritates me, but anyways, okay. So here we go. Right. Live video all the time, messed up. So okay. Yeah. Super smooth. All right, let's go into the next the next thing that we want to do, and we're talking about let's talk about purchasing tools. All right, the main thing about why you want to purchase tools. So don't waste your money, invest your money instead, meaning getting, get good tools, all right? Um, the main part of, of getting good tools is so you don't waste and buy more tools. Mario, just really quick say that, okay? Eh, básicamente, no perder el tiempo eh, invirtiendo herramientas eh, en las que no se den, sino invertirlas directamente eh, de acuerdo a nuestra experiencia. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, and so... The next thing is what we want to do is do not buy from eBay, Amazon, okay? The main the reason why is because, let me go, let me get, get to my next section here. Hopefully you can do that. The main reason why, ladies and gentlemen, is because you are going to get inferior tools at, at uh, eBay or Amazon. The flex in those tools is just, it's like watching a, a movie, right? Uh, like a Bruce Lee movie and, and the, the soundtrack is off, right? You kind of like, you get it, but it's a delay in your pushing. Not only that, these tools are not made with the same quality steel as these high-end brands are like A1 tools, Ultra, uh, Anson, Tequila, Dentcraft, things like that, which we will get into as well. They're going to break in on you. They're going to rust like crazy. They, they're just not going to perform the way they should. So I highly don't recommend buying eBay or Amazon tools, even though they're super cheap and they're tempting and they look really good. They're really, really bad. OK. Um, OK. So. Entonces, amigos. Puntualmente no queremos comprar herramientas que sean de Amazon ni de eBay. ¿Por qué? Porque así sean baratas, son herramientas que no tienen la misma flexibilidad que las herramientas americanas. Las herramientas que son de compañías de confianza en el sistema PDR son mucho mejores, van a evitar eh, riesgos en donde se pueda haber afectado 
el procedimiento de reparación, van a garantizar que tengan una durabilidad más alta y con eso ustedes van a ir a la fija, ¿sí? van a tener certeza de que están haciendo una buena inversión y así se sientan tentados, no lo hagan. Ok. All right, so we're going to be, we're going to be, aware, be very aware of, of those, um, let me see that actually, I'm kind of right here. Beware of those large toolkits, right? The, the, a lot of people, what they do is they buy a kit before they know what, how that kit works. They buy a huge tool package and then they start using the tools and they get frustrated because they don't know what that tool does. And they go to the next tool and then they don't know what that tool does. It just causes more confusion. The worst thing you can do is go buy tools that you don't understand yet how to, mm -hmm. how to use. The main thing is buy tools, the tools that we're recommending today, it's a very small set of tools that is going to get you ground, ground zero training. I mean, these tools we're recommending, almost every single professional PDR technician has these tools. They might not be the exact brand, but they have the very similar tools that will do the same thing. So, and we will go over those a little bit too. If you want to quickly summarize that, Mario, go ahead. Amigos, en el caso de, eh, de la, los kits, cuando ustedes van a comprar herramientas, eviten comprar los set completos de herramientas. ¿sí? Esto evita que ustedes se, se confundan en qué herramienta utilizar o cuál eh, puedo eh, seleccionar en cada situación. Realmente lo importante es que a través de este curso les vamos a enseñar cómo ustedes pueden seleccionar pocas herramientas con las cuales pueden ir trabajando de forma precisa y así eh, desarrollar sin tanta confusión su, su habilidad. All right. Cool. All right, so let me just get through this, Mario. Okay. So buy cheap, buy twice. So if you buy cheap tools, you're going to buy twice. All right. You're going to, you're going to end up, especially if, you, if you're doing it the right way, you're learning from denttrainer.com, you're watching some good YouTube videos, whatnot. Um, but if you use cheap tools, you're going to get frustrated. And, and that might not, you might not even get past first base with that. And that might frustrate you so, so much. You might get the wrong impression that this isn't good. You know, you're, it, this, is, this is more harder than it should be. And that's generally what happens is when you buy crappy tools, it becomes twice as hard to understand what you're doing and you get frustrated much faster. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, nunca compren, eh, o sea, no compren barato porque lo barato sale caro. Realmente, cuando ustedes van a comprar la herramienta, si ustedes solo se están fijando en el precio, van a tener inconvenientes porque esa herramienta les va a, eh, no va a tener la misma seguridad para trabajar y... Eh, tendrá que comprar dos veces. Por eso estamos haciendo esto para que ustedes sepan exactamente qué herramienta comprar. ¿Ok? Mucho ojo con eso. Ok, and then the, the, probably the best thing you can do right now is subscribe to denttrainer.com. Ok, so denttrainer.com is going to offer you um, a lot of options for you to, you know, learn how to use the tool right, uh, the, the tool discounts page. Uh, just very, very structured to go at your own pace. It's not like YouTube where you're watching a video and it's a good video and then all of a sudden you're looking and you're looking and then you find a good video, but it's, it doesn't connect with how you are learning, right? Dent Trainer helps you do that, all right? There's been a numerous and numerous of people who have learned, didn't go to personal training and learned from denttrainer.com from ground up. So I highly recommend it. It's the best investment before you purchase tools and, and then you'll save a lot more money. So a lot of people buy $2,000, $3,000 worth of tools, crappy tools, and then they could have made a small investment and then saved probably more than half that. So check out denttrainer.com. We'll give you a special discount at the end, okay? Very, very good discount. Okay, amigos, entonces estén muy pendientes porque pues fuera de este en vivo, lo que queremos es también guiarlos en una forma de aprendizaje alterna a la práctica. ¿Cómo se hace esto? A través de los cursos que tenemos en Dent Trainer. Hay cursos en español y hay cursos en inglés. Entonces, la idea de esto es que a diferencia de ustedes ver un video gratuito en YouTube, nosotros aquí les mostramos el paso a paso complementado con links de herramientas, complementado con el proceso, con qué herramientas se está utilizando y por qué. Y de esa forma ustedes van a saber 
exactamente el procedimiento, van a tener una idea más clara, vamos a, van a saber cómo a profundizar esa reparación, cómo afrontarla de una manera diferente y eso va a ser al final una, una muy buena inversión para ustedes. Entonces, ténganlo en cuenta porque al final vamos a, hacer, a dar muy buenos descuentos de nuestros cursos. Okay. So, now we're going to get into, uh, into the main, main part right here, okay? Mm -hmm. So, handles, why does it matter, okay? So we're talking about these type of handles, you know, the, let me get myself off the way here. We're talking about, let's go to that part right here. I don't want to go, I don't want to get myself out of the way. There you go. Okay. So basically let's switch it up. So we have these handles right here. I, I, hopefully, let me, let me go, ah, shoot. Actually I can do it, still do it, yeah. You should be able to hear me better, right? Still? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. That's pretty easy, right? You can still uh -huh. hear me good? Yeah, I, I hear you good. I hear you okay. good. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can buy the tools that already have the handles on them like this. Come on. My, it's, let me just let me go back here. I think I'm losing my signal here, Mario. Oh, uh -huh. right. Yeah. There you, you go. Buy, you can buy tools like this. All right. These are the traditional handle tools. This is a dent craft tool. And this is this this limits you though. Okay. So you can't you don't have any extra leverage to do this like you would with these. Right. If you can afford to buy handles that, that come off like these 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 handle like these tools right here. This is what these are for right here, this one in particular, okay? We'll get into this in just a second here. But this is just an option. So if you don't, you can't, let me switch, uh, let me switch my, my, my thing here. I think I'm gonna do that. Not gonna, not gonna, not gonna mess with that camera. Mm -hmm. So this, this limits you, right? Pretty good, pretty good handle, but down a door, or somewhere you're, you're very limited to the only contact with your wrist, right? You're going to have a lot of pressure on your wrist. You're going to feel uncomfortable in certain positions. Um, but when you have a tool like this, right? Now you have the ability to put it in different positions and put your handle back, your hand back, much more comfortable, much easier. Okay, Mario, just just go okay. ahead and elaborate on that. Bueno, o sea, ahora como ustedes lo estaban viendo, Mike estaba explicando puntualmente la diferencia entre un handle fijo y una herramienta que tenga una eh, un handle por separado. Ustedes pueden ver que cuando tenemos un handle fijo hay eh, límite en las posibilidades para mover y generar palanca, ¿sí? o sea, para mover y generar palanca. Entonces, al tener una eh, opción que sea con eh, handles por separado, tenemos mucha más versatilidad, podemos ser creativos a la hora de iniciar una reparación y podemos estar cómodos, o sea, realmente no necesitamos estar incómodos para afrontar una reparación. Con una buena inversión en herramientas, sabiendo en qué caso usarla y utilizando este handle, se puede llevar a cabo una reparación con mucha más calidad porque yo estoy cómodo durante la reparación. Eh, no, no estoy afectando mi muñeca, no estoy afectando mi hombro, sino que estoy en una posición ergonómica, ¿vale? Entonces debemos siempre tener en cuenta que cuando vayamos a trabajar vamos a utilizar estos handles a nuestro favor, ¿ok? Entonces ténganlo muy en cuenta porque... Eso es parte de lo que queremos comentarles acá. Okay, so let's let me go back here, okay? So detachable, the, one of the be the benefits of this, Mario, you don't have to like do, do it every second. Let me just let me get through this, okay? So right. The, the detachable. Mm -hmm. Right? The benefits of this thing is more leverage like I was mentioning. All right, I think it's pretty much what you're saying too as well, Mario. Right. Less weight for your tools. Ventajas. 
all right? Easy to organize, all right? So it makes your whole tool system way more easy to organize. Um, you don't have to worry about dead, more extra dead weight uh, when you are carrying around these tools. So it, you're probably going to save about 15 to 20 pounds. I'm not lying, at minimum, if you have a good set of tools with no handles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it just makes life plain easy. Mm -hmm. Se pueden so, tener mucho menos herramientas solo teniendo los handles con la posibilidad de poder variar los, las posturas. Entonces... Eso es otra de las ventajas que le estamos compartiendo. Básicamente es lo mismo que estamos hablando anteriormente. Yeah. So, oh, just to give you, Alan, um, unfortunately, there is no training in Arabic language. Okay. So I just wanted to quickly address that. Unfortunately, not, not now. I don't know anybody in, in the uh, Middle East yet who does PDR and would possibly be a trainer here. But anyways, mm -hmm. we'll get to that. Okay. Um, bare minimum pushing PDR tools. The 24-inch screw-on tool tip, which you see here. The great thing about this, ladies and gentlemen, okay, is that you have ventajas, amigos, ventajas de utilizar esta herramienta. Here you go. This is a 24-inch double bend soft tip. This is your tips. Mm -hmm. This does a lot of things in one tool. Okay. This does a lot of things in one tool. So we'll talk about that too. All right. Hace muchas cosas en solo una aplicación. La ventaja de esta herramienta es que tienen esos tips. Si ven esos tips, se le puede poner cada punta y con eso tener mucha versatilidad. Very versatile. So, I mean, you, you can use it down the doors. You can use it down the uh, quarter panels. You can use it pretty much in every open panel that you that has access. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Swiss Army knife of PDR tools. It's it's the all can do. And this is probably the number one tool that most PDR techs, including myself, I would say almost ninety five percent. If you're in the if you're in underneath a rock or something in the in the <laughs> desert or something and you don't have it okay but oh yeah you you do have this this tool okay i agree it is bomb.com right uh -huh. uh, probably the first tool i would purchase honestly ladies and gentlemen okay it's the it's the first tool that i would purchase if if i was watching this right now and i didn't know i didn't have any tools to buy i'm gonna buy this one right here okay uh, it does come there are ones that come with handles right so if that's the one that a budget and that's something you just need, you don't want to spend extra money on the, uh, the um, interchangeable handles, then get that. But you'll definitely want a set of tips mm -hmm. like this. Okay. And this is your extensions. This makes it more your, your tool have more leverage, creates more leverage on the end of the tip. This is for maybe aluminum or finishing sharp tips. Not maybe it is. Okay. This is your plastic tip. So you, you could, we use these as tapping down tips as well, but I dedicate one of them for pushing like body lines or the small areas that I want to pock up. So this is between these two, this is what I use a lot. Okay. This is the most common. This is the soft tip, they call it right now. It's called the firm tip, I think, but it doesn't come off as easy as they used to. So you can side load with this, you can push, it'll last a heck of a long time. You can use tape too as well. I don't want to get into all that because there's a lot of stuff to cover that I'm not mentioning on here. There's mm -hmm. the big rubber tip right here. So you can actually push a lot more metal softly and bigger, bigger chunks. And then you have the black tip, which is a little more softer. Okay. Now these are just an idea of what you could purchase. So I think Ultra has a set like this. I think Anson has a set like this. So you can, you can, um, you can pick at your at your leisure, but they generally will have a tip set for you. Okay. Amigo, muy ahead. brevemente les voy a comentar very briefly. Uh, voy a contarles sobre los tips que estaba hablando Mike. Entonces, como ustedes pueden ver, había unas extensiones. O sea, lo puntual de estos tips es que los vamos a utilizar en cada situación con una sola herramienta, ¿vale? Entonces, al tener esos tips, podemos generar más palanca, podemos empezar un golpe con una empujada suave o 
podemos terminar un golpe. ¿sí? Distintas puntas se utilizan en el procedimiento de reparación con solo una herramienta. Entonces ya ustedes se pueden dar cuenta de las grandes ventajas que solo tiene que comprar esas dos herramientas. ¿Ok? Entonces, teniendo en cuenta eso, vamos profundizando en la gran inversión que puede ser una herramienta como esta. ¿Ok? All right. Ok. You can go ahead. Okay, and the great for most panels that have open access, as we already talked about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the 22 inch door tool. We're going to do some, some more. This is another great tool, right? It's highly versatile. One of my favorites, right? Um, if you've known me in the past and watched me for a few, probably a while, you probably know that's to me, that's considered the, the Mo Money tool, right? Because every time I used it, right? It was Mo Money, Mo Money, Mo Money. So I made more money. Let me get that tool. Esta es una herramienta de puertas, las que está, la que estamos mostrando en este momento. Es una herramienta muy versátil que también con solo esa herramienta se pueden hacer muchísimos golpes de puerta y se puede garantizar tener muy buena palanca por lo largo de la curva. All right, Mike. Well, this is a shorter version of the door lord, okay? So you can see that so I can fit it in the whole section. You generally if you If you are going to get one of these, I would pick the 22 inch. It's it's not too long, it's not too short, but this is a smaller one. But I'm just showing you on what I mean by the length. Now, the Door Lord version is is got a five inch kick, so it's generally an inch longer than most of the door tools that you see out there, and it makes a huge difference. Um, right here, you see I have tape on there. So that's a tech tip there. So if you're planning to use a tool like this, I would start with a little bit of gaffer's tape and cover it so you're not making poke marks right away. It's going to prevent it. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, we're going to hold the questions to the end. So I'm not, we're not trying to ignore you. We're just trying to stay on time, mm -hmm. make this flow as quick as we can, but, but informative. And then we'll take take some answers, some questions at the end, and we'll make sure that we try to answer those questions for you because I know you guys do have some. So, Mario, you just want to address that. Okay. Quick, Para las preguntas que ustedes tengan, no se olviden que las pueden hacer sin ningún problema. Nosotros vamos a ir leyéndolas y al final hacemos una sesión de preguntas y respuestas, ¿vale? Entonces, tengan en cuenta que todo lo que ustedes tengan de dudas lo vamos a resolver aquí y estamos es para ayudarles, ¿vale? Entonces, sigamos en el progreso de esto y al final hacemos una sesión de preguntas y respuestas. Ok. Perfect. I think we're, we're, we're good on that, right? Mm -hmm. So, let me, let me finish, go to my, that, that, that right there. Okay. So, slides between the window and the skin, right? Mm -hmm. Tip is great for all types of dents. So, you're mainly side loading from, from the side of that tip. Mm -hmm. All right. Octagon hub, octagon or hub system. So, you know, that's just kind of like what I'm saying here. It's like you, you either have this system, which is the hub, or you have this system right there, which is the octagon. Okay. Pick your poison. Mm -hmm. Están las dos formas de agarrar la herramienta. Las ventajas es que una es en forma de octágono y la otra es en forma de ratch. Vale. Entonces, Pueden hacer distintas aplicaciones, depende, de, o sea, el handle se adapta de acuerdo a la punta en cómo esté esa herramienta, ¿vale? Eh, entonces, tengan eso en cuenta. Ahí, ahí alguien hizo una pregunta, al final vamos a estar con, con las preguntas y con un gusto les ayudamos en todas las dudas que tengan. I'm just putting it up there, Mario, so you can see it. You don't have to address it right then and there because we did let people know that, you know, we're, we're going to address that later, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the other great thing about the uh, 22 inch door tool is the shaved shaft, less flex. I mean, it is very strong to go down the window and really twist. We're going to show some more video later on, just a bit about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the door Lord, as I mentioned, has a five inch kick. So that's going to give you just an, an inch longer, which makes a really good difference on the leverage. 
Uh, Ultra has a four inch kick, but you know, if uh, Ultra does make things that are custom too, so if you want to do that, you can as well. Um, Gaffer's tape helps reduce the push marks. Like I mentioned, it helps on almost every type of tools. So uh, don't, don't, uh, don't be afraid of using Gaffer's tape. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Aquí en, en las ventajas que le estamos hablando, eh, lo principal es este, que esta herramienta es muy buena para todo tipo de golpes. Es una herramienta que eh, al, al utilizarse con tape, tiene la ventaja de hacer empujadas suaves. Eh, el kick de la herramienta, es decir, la, la curvatura y el largo en donde está eh, hecha, es suficiente para en un espacio abierto generar buena palanca. Si tenemos un espacio abierto, no vamos a tener muy buena posibilidad de palanca porque se nos va a girar la herramienta. Entonces, al tener esta opción, podemos generar muy buena palanca y garantizar que podamos progresar en la reparación. ¿Ok? All right, Mike. Ok. All right, so the 24-inch whale tail. Mm -hmm. All right, it's one of the most useful between bracing and tight access areas. We're going to show, again, more demos on this one, okay? Punta de ballena, amigos. Esta es una punta de ballena de 24 pulgadas. Bendable for better placement. Okay, so we can bend the heck out of that thing. So mm -hmm. let, me, let me just do a quick... Roll. Se puede doblar de muchas formas para llegar a los accesos más complejos. ¿Vale? La ventaja de estas herramientas es que pueden llegar a lugares que son difíciles, ¿ok? Entonces, mira cómo se habla, mira cómo se habla. <ríe> Efectivamente, tienen mucha posibilidad de doblarse dependiendo de cada situación, ¿ok? Entonces, esa es la gran ventaja. Yeah. So, I like to do two sometimes when it's really like, because these can be quite, quite sharp. So, what I can do is put a little gaffer's tape, mm -hmm. right? right on the side of that. So when I go to push, it reduces the, the poke marks. And then when I'm really trying to finish, I'll take the tape off and then slide in and finish off the dent, okay? So. Como es una herramienta que, que tiene una punta metálica, Mike lo que está diciendo es que él generalmente le pone tape, ¿sí? O sea, le pone gaffer's tape para proteger y que sea una empujada más suave y al final la remueve y termina el golpe. So these, these are meant, the, a good, a good whale tail is going to drive the energy right to the tip. So there is no flex in the shaft. So when you are twisting, it goes instantly right to the tip. Okay. Mm -hmm. That crappy whale tails, you twist and it's flexing like all over here. No good. No bueno. All right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. good flex, good drive to the tip. Muy bueno. Ok, very good. Okay. So. Muy buena flexibilidad. Lo que Mike está diciendo es que la herramienta a, a, o sea, es rígida y al girarla, al solo girarla, se, se siente el contacto con, la, con la, digamos, la punta hacia el metal de la pieza. Entonces, la ventaja es que tenemos una eh, empujada muy controlada y sabemos que es lo que estamos haciendo. ¿Qué pasa? Si compramos las herramientas baratas en donde puede que se flecte de una forma exagerada, ahí efectivamente vamos a tener una posibilidad de que se hagan marcas en el metal y ese es el peor error que puede haber en este sistema y ya es prácticamente incorregible. Entonces, importantísimo tenerlo en cuenta para que puedan utilizar esta punta de ballena para ingresar en los refuerzos de manera precisa y controlada. Ok, so, strong shaft, less flex, like I mentioned. Right, different sizes available, so you can get obviously different types of lengths, widths, sizes, and brands. Okay. Mm -hmm. eh, diferentes, acuérdense, son diferentes eh, tamaños, ¿no? No es solo ese tamaño, sino que dependiendo de cada situación, vamos a tener tamaños de herramienta que sean eh, pues más cortos, algunos más largos. Si necesitamos entrar en un capó, si necesitamos entrar en una zona que sea eh, de mayor longitud, pues utilizamos lo que requeramos para garantizar llegar ahí. Ok, entonces téngalo muy en cuenta. Perfect. Ok. So, let's check this out. So, bonus tools, right? So, we really just want to talk about 
three main tools, but if you want to get an extra set, another set, I mean, excuse me, another two tools that we're going to talk about is the double bend blade tip tool. So that double bend blade tip tool looks like there's two brands that I have. Tenemos herramienta eh, doble pliegue con una punta metálica, ¿vale? Entonces ahí vamos a mostrar dos marcas diferentes. So these are really good for going down the side of a, of a quarter panel, going down a rear, uh, rear uh, excuse me, a rear door in between the boot harness. Uh, actually for open panels like a, a hood, a roof, a, um, again, uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of a trunk, but they could be longer, but they do come in different lengths. But if you're going to get another one, so you, you want to practice many different areas or focal points, then you probably want to get uh, one of these. And this one is Anson. It's called the Double Shock. Mm -hmm. And this one is Ultra. Now, again, you can, you can get... Uh, let's take a look here. You can probably get. I'm gonna put a. I'm gonna put a link up here. So this is Ultra. I mean, this is uh, Anson. And ponle los links de cada una de las herramientas para que lo tengan en cuenta. And then this one. This one is Ultra. Okay. They they look similar, right? But they look, uh, they look very similar. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. but. Um, yes. Now, I'm not saying I'm not saying those are the only two brands to purchase. Okay, these are the ones I have that are very similar, if not exactly, here at my shop. There are different manufacturers who make that, like Dentcraft, A1 Tools, Blem Tools, you know, uh, PDR Finesse. So there's there's a really a lot of to choose from. Um, but I, I'm going to tell you right now that the, you will not be disappointed with this brand. So okay. Hay muchas marcas en el mercado, entonces tengan en cuenta que no solo son estas dos marcas. O sea, la mayoría de herramientas de este tipo son parecidas. Sin embargo, eh, no es tan solo estas opciones, sino que podemos mirar eh, otras marcas como Blem Tools, como Dencraft Tools, y las que ustedes van a encontrar en, 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 su, en su búsqueda puede ser una muy buena opción, siempre y cuando no sea de eBay o Amazon. Ojo pues. All right. All right. So the other one is a, um, I would consider it a wire tool. Okay. Now the wire tool is, and this is this one right here. It's pretty simple. Okay. Very highly effective. Very good tool. Um, let me grab that one right here. Entonces estamos utilizando una herramienta que es tipo wire, que es como un cable. O sea, se le dice por lo delgada. Sí, es una herramienta corta que tiene mucha versatilidad y se puede utilizar en distintas aplicaciones. Se puede doblar, ahí como lo está mostrando Mike, de acuerdo a lo que ustedes necesiten y es muy importante tenerla en su arsenal. So, the reason why, this is the Dentcraft one. I think it's the WT9, okay? Mm -hmm. I've had this tool for 15 plus years, minimum, I think, 15 plus years. 15 años teniendo esa herramienta. It is very strong, very strong as you can see, right? Great on aluminum. It, it's the only wire I trust to go in a, a hood that's super hard, like tough aluminum, and I'm pushing. When you buy cheap tools and you're using something like this, there's two things that happen. It's going to bend or it's going to snap. And what happens if it snaps, it hits the freaking paint, breaks the paint, no mames. <laughs> All right. Very para, los que, para los que ustedes, para los que, no ente, los que no entendieron, esta herramienta, o sea, Mike dice que la ha estado utilizando durante 15 años y algo más, y aún así sigue preservando la, la fuerza, digamos, que tiene en su, en su elaboración. Entonces, cuando uno está trabajando aluminio o piezas que requieren un movimiento eh, firme de metal, si tiene una herramienta barata, pues, ¿qué va a pasar? Que se puede doblar, se dobla y no hace la palanca sobre el metal. O sea, no mueve absolutamente nada el golpe. O se puede doblar por completo. ¿sí? O sea, se gira en, en, la, en el mismo espacio donde está generándose la presión y eso genera marcas, ¿sí? Lo que hemos dicho que no queremos. Entonces, ténganlo presente 
para cuando tengan este tipo de herramienta. Okay, another thing for you, you techs who, or maybe be watching this and you, you have some of this, something like this, but uh, you, I have a coding on, on this right here. So if you look, right, it's a little bit of a coding on there and that's called Glexo magic. What I did is I just put a little bit of resin on there, right? And it cures with the UV or the sun and it's not as harsh. It's not as, as aggressive. So I can push more softer. Um, another big benefit about this tool though, okay, is I don't use the tip that often as much as I used to I actually use the heel a lot and the heel, okay, acts like a soft tip, right? Mm -hmm. So I can push like this, really get a deep dent out really quick. And then when I go to finish, I'll turn the tool around and, and finish with the tip. Okay, tengan en cuenta que lo que está hablando Mike es que él eh, está utilizando en la punta de esa herramienta una resina que ayuda, yo les he mostrado en algunos videos, se llama Glexo, es una resina que se agrega a la punta de la herramienta y se seca con eh, radiación UV, ¿ok? Entonces eso hace que quede firme y el momento de uno empujar, sean unas empujadas suaves y al final cuando uno ya está terminando, uno eh, cambia la herramienta y empieza a trabajar con la con el reverso de la herramienta, ¿sí? con la parte eh, trasera, ¿sí? con el reverso de la herramienta y termina el golpe ya que está haciendo contacto metal-metal. ¿Ok? Entonces, es excelente. Ok. So, now we're going to get into a little bit of more accessories, right? So, some of the most, you know, accessories that you want to use a lot, which is small things that make a big difference, right? We're going to talk about those right now. Pequeñas cosas que hacen una gran diferencia en los accesorios, los complementos que necesitamos. So your window guard. When you first get your window guard, you're going to need to bend it. And if you don't bend it, it's going to get caught in that brace. So make sure you bend it, slide it to the side, and slip it down. Mm -hmm. Asegúrense de doblarlo siempre el, el protector del vidrio para que no pegue contra el refuerzo, para que ustedes puedan ingresarlo sin ningún problema. Esto va a proteger el vidrio, ¿no? Tengamos eso siempre en cuenta en todo golpe de puertas. Okay, your wedge. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. In the, don't worry, we're going to show more about that, okay? Um, mm -hmm. But meanwhile, let me, let me show you my wedge, okay? Mm -hmm. Aquí estamos mostrándoles el, la cuña, digamos que llamamos en español, que es para separar el espacio en donde vamos a empujar, ¿sí? Ustedes pueden darse cuenta que esta opción es versátil, tiene unas, unas eh, formas en donde se adapta. Si ven esos pliegues, eso es precisamente para que cuando uno lo baje se mantenga eh, todo el tiempo en una posición. So, yeah, the wedge is going to go inside towards the window guard. All right. So, you don't, this part goes against the, the belt molding like this. So, you don't ruin it. Okay. Meanwhile, as you're pushing and twisting, this bites into the window guard. It stays. It keeps itself steady so it doesn't squeeze out like a normal we uh, wedge would. The other option, too, as well, is this is from Anson, so it has different connection ends that you can put on. This one actually can pull out the fender right there. You see that fender, that splash guard. I grab it and I pull it back. This is really good for that. So I just keep it on because I use this a lot. Aparte de, aparte de también tener, eh, o sea, la función de separar el espacio entre la, el metal y el vidrio de la puerta, lo que Mike estaba diciendo es que ese, ese gancho que tiene sirve para abrir el guardapolvo, ¿vale? Esa ventaja la tiene este wedge en particular y tiene una gran... Eh, aplicación porque es, o sea, tiene dos herramientas en una. Entonces, importante, a ver, te les compartimos el link sobre esta herramienta. Ok. So, let's talk about that again, ok. Reflection board, right? You have options, right? The, 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 the most cheapest good quality board is something like this right it comes in fog lines there's many to choose from this is dent time right here okay this is a board de reflexión básico okay. básico 
no tiene iluminación, sino la reflexión es a través de la luz del día. Eso es lo más básico que pueden conseguir. Super easy, but a more affordable. It will work if you work outside a lot, lots of sun. This will probably work really well. If you're indoors or you really want to train your eyes the best way, I would try to invest in getting a light. Si trabajas en, en el día, si trabajas, digamos, a, a las afueras, esta es una buena opción, digamos que no la principal, porque te va a dar la iluminación del día. Sin embargo, en el caso de querer eh, acostumbrar los ojos, puedes utilizar eh, los boards que tienen iluminación LED, que les vamos a mostrar en este momento. So, let's talk about the, the different reasons. So, fog. This is what it looks like on fog board, right? And this is what it looks like on lines. The difference between the two, fog is contrast. The lines has curvature, right? If you can use both reflections, it is going to help you out even better, right? So stay open-minded. You learn to use both reflections. You want to become more black belt and everything. Learn to be the master at all types of reflections if you can. I think it's it's something that's that's going to help you tremendously, okay? If you're already a fog guy, you want to learn lines, put some lines in the middle of it. Use that as your reference, okay? Your fog will always teach you what's high and what's low, and vice versa. So if you want to learn fog and you're a line person, the lines are going to teach you what's high and what's low, and it'll tell you what how, how that works. That's how I taught myself way back in the day. So um, I think that's that's an advantage to having both. But um, But generally, try to master one reflection at a time. Right. Hey, man, can you please show again the the video of the reflection? Yeah, yeah. So I can it. explain uh, very briefly. Yeah. Okay, amigos. Entonces estábamos hablando puntualmente de la diferencia. Estamos ya con iluminación LED. Okay. Oh, shoot. it went backwards. Sorry, dude. <laughs> It's not gonna let me do. But go ahead. Just go ahead. Try to try to. How about this? You talk, and then I'll kind of show the lines on myself, dude. How's that? Okay. Entonces, la diferencia en, bueno, estamos hablando de la reflexión de luz, ¿ok? Primero miramos la reflexión de luz que nos da el día, pero ya tenemos una reflexión que es a través de luz LED. Mira la diferencia de ese board. En el centro tiene líneas y en la parte externa tiene la iluminación tipo niebla que llamamos, ¿vale? Cuando utilizamos esa iluminación de niebla, tenemos un contraste muy distinto a las líneas. Depende de cada aplicación, eh, uno puede sentirse más cómodo o no. Sin embargo, lo que queremos decirles a ustedes es que siempre utilicen las dos opciones, o sea, traten de acostumbrarse de las dos formas para que puedan eh, utilizarlas siempre a su favor y tener como más bagaje y más, eh, más respaldo en su aprendizaje para poder afrontar cada golpe de la mejor manera, ¿vale? It's a good Mario. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. one. All right, so top downs, right? We're not gonna, I don't want to confuse you, ladies, John, but this is probably some of the most common top downs on the market. But if you are going to get one, Mario, you can let them know, get the one on the left. I will show it to you as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Amigos, entonces, para no confundirlos, o sea, aquí les mostramos unos knockdowns o punzones con los que nivelamos el metal, ¿ok? Entonces, el de la izquierda que está mostrando Mike en este momento es un, eh, un tap down que es básico y este va a servir para múltiples aplicaciones y en el momento en el que vayas sintiendo más eh, necesidad de abordar otras opciones, pues vas a ir invirtiendo. Por ahora la mejor alternativa es tener este eh, de plástico, sencillamente, Empezar a utilizarlo en distintas maneras y distintos golpes y así eh, ir avanzando en, en todo el aprendizaje. You know what, Mario? I'm super glad that, you know, a, um, a lot of your, a lot of the questions and a lot of stuff are coming from, you know, South America and like mm -hmm. maybe Mexico. I don't, I don't know, but it's, it's good that they're participating a bit. Tell them thank you for joining us as well. And if they have some questions, like I see they're asking right now, mm -hmm. just be patient. We're almost done. We're gonna we're gonna get to those questions at the end. 
Okay. Amigos, de parte de, eh, de nosotros queremos o sea, recalcar que estamos eh, muy agradecidos por las preguntas y la participación más que todo de nuestra comunidad latina que está en constante crecimiento y ténganos paciencia que ya al final vamos a, a desarrollar las preguntas que ustedes tengan, les vamos a ayudar en las dudas que podamos eh, desarrollarles y con mucho gusto estamos para eso. Muchas gracias nuevamente por estar conectados y pues esto lo hacemos es para que ustedes puedan seguir creciendo. Yeah, yeah I don't think it's going to, you know, and uh, when it comes to hammers, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think it's going to matter much um, because it really depends on what you guys want to use and what you're comfortable in the beginning. So, but there are different variations. There's paddles that I think is probably the, it's the easiest to use. You have a much longer strike strike zone to, to hit and strike the, the, the tap down with, less likely to miss. Um, and then you got your 10 ounce hammers and your body hammers that are give you more weight when you're trying to knock down heavier crowns. So, but you're gonna, you'll probably end up having one or two of the, your favorite hammers. So kind of, kind of, get a variety of different hammers and see what what gravitates to you. Mm -hmm. And in the case of the martillos, estamos en la parte de accesorios, vamos a los martillos. Realmente no hay una selección eh, que deba ser, mejor dicho, eh, muy clara frente a esto. Es básicamente como ustedes se sientan cómodos. Si ustedes de pronto habían sido eh, a trabajar en pintura o en eh, trabajo de la tonería, pueden tener un martillo más pesado o hay unos que tienen eh, mejor precisión con un martillo más liviano. Entonces pueden utilizarlo en, en cualquiera de sus eh, aplicaciones, tener uno o dos, y con eso es más que suficiente. Perfecto. Ahora we're, we're going to get, show a little bit more video footage of, of these tools being in, used in action too. So the chain is probably one, of, it's the cheapest, it's, it's probably one of the most effective to help you create leverage with your tools. We'll, we'll get into that. Okay. Vamos a avanzar con, eh, al final. Con lo, que, con lo que es la cadena que se está mostrando en este momento, que es básicamente para tener eh, palanca cuando no tenemos, eh, pues, no tenemos una buena accesibilidad. Entonces, esta es una opción realmente muy económica, eh, sencilla, que les vamos a mostrar cómo se utiliza en este caso. Ok, tool usage, right? So, let's check this out. So, proper PDR techniques getting better results, right? Bar you used Saturday to ultra net meetup is from Dentcraft. Hey, Mike, the bar you took to class Saturday to ultra. Okay, I'll have to address him a little bit later, Luis. Okay. Um, door versus hood. Why? Okay. This is, it's not a versus. Okay. So let me get into why you'd want to, to practice personally on a door more than a hood. I know a hood could be easier. You can go get a junkyard and it's easy to set up on something and practice, but I think you're going to ha struggle a lot more when you go to the side panel, meaning in the fender, the door, the quarter panel, or some of you guys say bonnets, uh, rear wing, stuff like that. But um, the reason why is because when you're looking at a dent sideways, right, um, your peripheral gets kind of off and your brain's going, what the heck? If the faster you can get used to working on a dent sideways, the, the, fast, the faster you'll learn and get better. Because once you transition to go do a hood, it's not, it doesn't take you, it's not as challenging to learn, okay? Mario, you want to go ahead and set that and mention okay. that? Okay, okay, amigos. Entonces, lo que estamos hablando aquí es, realmente no hay una diferencia, o sea, estamos hablando de la práctica, cómo llevar eso a la práctica. Entonces, podemos tener un capo o podemos tener eh, una puerta de cualquier vehículo. Que, o sea, realmente se puede conseguir un capo en una chatarrería y sabemos que es más sencillo. Sin embargo, si tienen la posibilidad de practicar en una puerta, va a ser mucho mejor porque ustedes no están mirando el, el, el golpe de frente, sino que tienen que recostarse un poco. ¿sí? Esto va a crear una mayor dificultad y va a, estar, va a ponerlos en situaciones o posiciones más incómodas, lo cual va a servir para que cuando ustedes vayan al capó, tengan mucha más seguridad. ¿Ok? Entonces, ténganlo muy en cuenta en el momento de la práctica. So, common ways to set up, right? So, one of the most common ways to set up here, 
is take your, your wedge, slide it in the, way, in the window guard between the, the window, slide it over to the edge, not all the way to the edge, okay? You don't want any pressure from the edge of the window guard on the edge of the window itself because you could crack, break, you know, or damage the window. So we don't want that. So set your window guard up just like that. Mm -hmm. Ahí lo que tienen que tener en cuenta, como les estamos mostrando en el video, es que pongan el, el protector del vidrio y separen sutilmente ese espacio sin necesidad de ir muy al filo. No forcen demasiado ese espacio porque puede craquearse el vidrio y eso es lo último que queremos, ¿ok? Ok, next, the door tools, soft tip setup. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. So if you have a soft tip, you have a door tool, look, Get your, get your handle ready, put it in a position that you want, right? And once you get in that position, I like to have it somewhat just cocked just a little bit at an angle. That way, when I'm pushing naturally, my wrist isn't over twisting, I'm not getting cramped or anything like that. I'm gonna slide it towards where that wedge is as close as I can, and I'm going to lean towards the window, right? And twist, I'm balancing it, okay? If I do too much of either or, actually, if I twist, which is most common, if I twist too much, I'm going to slip. I need to push against and lean, use my body weight and lean against that, that door, okay, and push against the dent. So that is going to help you keep more control of your repair. Entonces, amigos, cuando ustedes están trabajando eh, e ingresan la, la, la herramienta, miren que el handle se pone de tal forma que no esté 90 grados hacia, hacia mí. Es decir, que yo lo mueva de tal forma que yo me pueda recostar un poco sobre el panel, tal cual como se vio en el video, y aprovechar el espacio de la ventana para yo, aparte de tener toda esa palanca, utilizar mi cuerpo en contra y trabajar cómodamente a través del golpe. Entonces, al mover, al tener esta opción en cuenta, tengo más versatilidad, trabajo cómodo, y puedo seguir en el procedimiento de reparación sin afectar mis muñecas u hombros o fatigarme demasiado. Okay, so your heat shield, right? So if you are going to go on the hood, I think it's best to do it on the car, okay? Because that's real world stuff. I like to use this clip puller right here that I'll show in just a minute. That clip puller will quickly help pop off those clips without ruining it. So well, this is what I'm talking about. And we may have a link to this, may not, but Ultra carries them, the Dent Craft, Anson, and it's this one right here. So this is the type of clip puller you want. What it does is it grabs, right, and pulls. So now your clips aren't breaking. Those ones like this, no bueno, no good, okay? They, 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 they stretch the clip. They, they don't grab the clip. This grabs the clip. And you'll have much easier time taking those heat shields off. Mike, uh, would you would you check? Uh, I think uh, we are not seeing you. So oh. uh, can you put again the camera? Yeah, hold on. Mm -hmm. We're not on. Oh, geez, man. Here we go. Estamos explicándoles cómo se puede utilizar un removedor de clips para remover esta parte del capó. Y estamos diciendo que si van a practicar en un capó, traten de utilizar el capó del mismo vehículo, porque estamos hablando de una situación real. Que, bueno, eventualmente, si el golpe está ubicado en una zona que es diferente o que es eh, difícil, pues evidentemente vamos a tratar de bajarlo. Pero inicialmente vamos a trabajar con el capó puesto y les vamos a mostrar cómo se hace eh, este procedimiento de una forma muy rápida. Okay, Mike. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you see me? Uh, no, no. No? I can see myself. <laughs> Estamos tratando de ponerle la cámara a ustedes para mostrarles este procedimiento. Entonces, realmente es esto lo que yo les repito. Mira, cuando tenemos una situación en donde queremos practicar, no debemos estar tan cómodos, es decir, o sea, lo que yo me refería en el aspecto del capo era que si se baja, 
pues vamos a estar súper cómodos ahí. ¿sí? Una cosa es entender el movimiento de metal y otra es real, o sea, realizar el trabajo en situaciones reales. ¿sí? Eso es lo que queremos. I'm plugged, I'm plugged in and it's not like, I don't know why I'm not having such a good signal here. Maybe I should just hold on a second. Let me see if I can switch it to other networks. Tengan paciencia, amigos. This is a video en vivo. This is a live video. Just take a minute. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, I'm trying to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. There you go. Am I good? We see you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let me go switch to this. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. Are we? Are you? We good, Mario? Um. Uh, we are in the. We are in the image with the tool usage features. Yeah, you can see that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So now we're going to be talking about the propping the hood, right? So, a lot. What we want to do is just prop that hood right like that, closer to the uh, to the side where we're going to fix the dent, and then take a rope ratchet, and then stabilize the hood, right, and clip it down. And now we're good. We're ready to start pushing or working the dent. Mm -hmm. Entonces, amigos, como pudieron ver en el video, lo que les estamos diciendo es que estábamos armando el capó. Entonces, al quitar la tapicería interna eh, con un saca clips teniendo en cuenta que pueda agarrarlo, eso lo dejamos en los links para que no se partan los clips. Aseguramos el capó con una, eh, con una, eso se dice, un hood prop o, sí, una, una, un estabilizador y una cuerda para que quede fijo. Ahí ya se puede ver en el video que la postura queda totalmente cómoda para poder trabajar el capó. Ok, so, now next what we're going to do, can you see that, Mario? Yeah, I yeah. can I can see that. Setting leverage, right? We're going to take that chain and we're going to find that hole. And then each one of those chains represents a leverage point. So we can go lower or we can go higher. Generally, the shorter the shaft on the tool, the higher you want to go. That creates more leverage for yourself or add more tip extensions to that tool. And you'll be able to use, use it the same way, create the same leverage. Mira cómo estamos, o sea, ¿se acuerdan de la cadena que habíamos hablado? Pues efectivamente se utiliza para ubicarse en los orificios de fábrica que tiene el capó. ¿Cuál es la idea? Que se pueda utilizar como palanca y cuando ustedes quieran más palanca pueden utilizar el orificio de la cadena que está más cercano a la pieza. Entonces tienen múltiples aplicaciones para que lo tengan en cuenta y lo puedan utilizar en cualquier situación. Um, yeah, Miguel, don't worry. We're having a little bit, it's a little bit blurry, but don't worry. We're going to repost this. It should be, uh, it'll be in perfect condition when we repost it, okay? So thank you guys for hanging in there with me today. Uh, usually I have the best connection here at the shop. That's why I'm doing it at the shop. And then I'm not, I'm not having a good day here today for the... Uh, mm -hmm audio and the connection. So thank you for at least being with me and understanding. So let's go do this one more time here. We're almost done. Okay. Then we can start doing our, our normal stuff here. Yeah. Usually I'm, I'm freaking hooked up like a mofo dude. So, uh, let's, let's do this. Okay. Last, the whale tail overview. All right. So the whale tail, generally the whale tail is, is designed to go between the bracing, as you can see right here, slips right there between that, that glue, and then you can push through the glue. Again, slipping it back, pushing it through the glue, and then you can twist or push through the glue and we'll go further in where your dent's at between that brace. Very versatile whale tail indeed, like a hood, roofs, trunks, anything that's got a brace between there, that's where you're going to use that tool. Entonces, amigos, la utilización de la, de la punta de ballena en la práctica del de capó. Como ustedes ven, por dentro tiene refuerzos. Entonces, para llegar a través de esos refuerzos, como les había mostrado anteriormente, se utiliza esa herramienta en donde se ingresa, se, puede, se pueden, digamos, afectar los sellantes o se puede utilizar un espacio que tenga de acuerdo al diámetro de esa palanca y se genera eh, presión moviendo la izquierda a la derecha 
de acuerdo a como ustedes tengan el golpe y garantizamos que se haga la palanca necesaria. Perfect. Ok, cool. So, thanks, Miguel. Appreciate your support. Thank you, Miguel. Ok. Thank you. So, Den Trainer. All right. So, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I can't teach you. I can teach you and Mario can teach you all you want. Um, we can do these sessions, which we're going to, and but trust me, I'm going to get better at these things. Um, the Den Trainer is going to teach you a heck of a lot, man, way more. And I know you guys are thinking, well, I'm going to pay $100 or $300 to get on there, but I think I'll just go and, and explore and do it myself and save my money because I'm going to go buy new tools. Well, don't forget on Den Trainer, as a subscriber, you save anywhere between five to 20% off these tools. So right off the bat, you're going to save some tools. Stick, stick around too. For the people who are still sticking around, we're doing some, and you have to be present to win. We are going to give some tool giveaways too as well in here. So as I was mentioning, some of the benefits of here, of learning here, learn at your own pace, as I was saying, right? And you can summarize this at the end, Mario. The English or Spanish options available, Organized and structured curriculum covering beginner to advanced topics. Gain your practical understanding of tool usage. And let's keep going. Access to exclusive tool discounts, as I was mentioning earlier. Connect with the community of like-minded individuals. So people who really want to learn, people who aren't trying to, you know, put down other people. You know, you're afraid to ask questions out there in those groups because there's there's a-holes out there. There's not going to be no a-holes in here, man. I'll tell you that because I will kick them out quicker than you can freaking think and give them their money back. I do not like that in, in our community. Okay. So they enhance your professional development and skills and so on and so forth. Okay. Mario, you go ahead and, and go ahead and summarize that if you'd like. Okay, amigos. La plataforma que ustedes conocen donde ofrecemos contenido como el que estamos compart como estamos compartiéndoles es eh, una gran ventaja para complementar su práctica, ¿vale? Entonces, aquí les, les mostramos algunas de las ventajas que tienen eh, al utilizar esta plataforma. Tengan en cuenta que, aparte de estar aprendiendo, ustedes tienen descuento con una de las, de las marcas más significativas de herramientas que les estamos mostrando. Y aparte de esto, pues, tienen una guía en donde se les da un, una orientación paso a paso de todas las herramientas que se utilizan, de distintas situaciones, de golpes grandes, eh, de golpes agudos, golpes en línea, que les van a servir muchísimo para complementar todo esto que estamos hablando y entrar en el escenario real de práctica con mucha más robustez, con mucha más seguridad. ¿Ok? Ténganlo muy en cuenta. Ok. Antes de que se olvide, pueden hacer preguntas también. Dentro okay. del, de la misma plataforma, ustedes pueden hacer preguntas, cualquier pregunta, y nosotros estaremos ahí mismo, tanto Mike como yo, les contestaremos todas las preguntas que tengan sobre cada curso. ¿Ok? So, upcoming live beginner webinars. All right, so what we're going to be doing here, and we're going to be doing light up and pushing 101. We might film this ahead of time just me and mario go a different have the same setup and and go from there okay um i'm not you know this is a this is technically brand new ladies john i know some of you guys are saying that some of the, you're having a bad feed coming through so don't worry it's it's going to be rebroadcasted in perfect uh video so i've got a copy on my side mario's got a copy inside and i'll just put it together um so Later on, we're going to be doing light setup. We're going to take you from ground up, right? How to set your board up. If you're a fog person, we're going to show you how to do that. If you're a line board, you how to do that. I'll have you both reflections on my side so you can see kind of the difference between the two. Two cameras set up. So we might probably shoot that, like record it uh, or set it up and then do another one like this. But um, anyways, so that is what's in the four. We want to kind of just take you by hand and going from one webinar to another and to another and just slowly help you understand the techniques. If you're impatient and you want to go ahead and do that now, then go check out denttrainer.com. All right. Go there, learn all you want. And I'm telling you what, here, check this out. So if you want to go, you have 
till the end of the month to use this discount. It, it goes, once it goes, it goes. I'm not giving it another one because I only give discounts once a year and that's Black Friday. You have a special chance to take advantage 20% off of Dent Trainer. So any subscription, including Mario's subscription, okay, you get 20% off. All right, use code beginners. All right, mm -hmm. use code beginners. You'll save 20% off and you only have a window to use it until the end of this month. Right? And this is the only time you'll be able to use it. Any other webinar in the future, I am not, I don't have the discounts. So, amigos, tengan en cuenta que este código que vamos a utilizar es para que ustedes tengan un descuento del 20% en todos los cursos que se tienen en este momento. Y realmente eh, es una posibilidad que estamos desarrollando porque queremos guiarlos en, o sea, lo que, en lo que viene, que son webinars de lo que, ustedes, o sea, lo que ustedes más requieran de acuerdo al aprendizaje y el progreso paso a paso, ¿vale? Entonces, aprovechen esta oportunidad porque es un contenido que se hace con eh, mucha dedicación para que cada uno de ustedes pueda aprender y pueda tener una eh, gran oportunidad de crecer en esta industria. Entonces, uh, aprovechenlo. Es hasta el uh, February 1st. Es hasta el primero de febrero. Entonces, tienen ese tiempo. Yo de ustedes lo haría de una vez. Y empezaría a actuar en vez de tanto hablar, ¿sí? O sea, hay que actuar sencillamente y entre más, empece, entre más rápido empecemos, más estamos un pie adelante. Entonces, tengan oh, muy en cuenta. It's, it's till the 20th, excuse me, until the end of this month. February 1st, you won't even be able to use it. So it goes till the end of this month, okay? February 1st, it expires. So go mm -hmm. ahead and take advantage 20% off. I mean, you can't beat that. So please do that. Use code BEGINNERS. Uh, aprovechen, 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 amigos. HDMI. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Q&A. Let's get into it, right? All right. So, okay. ladies and gentlemen, let's talk. Mario, let's, 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 let's see what everybody's got. And, and by the way, um, I just want to say thank you to the uh, Cole Fox. Thanks a lot for always being your uh, a big supporter and and what I do and what everyone else does. Um, Hugo, the same thing. Uh, thank you and everybody else out there who is watching and who is a currently a Dent Trainer member. I appreciate your support and Mary and I and Mario. And Mario is probably one of the the, the busiest trainers on there that has uh, really thrived on Dent Trainer. He has good, very good content and uh, you can tell he's very open. But um, going back to Cole though, that guy is a monster of a hail tech. He really doesn't need Dent Trainer. But as I say, if you keep an open mind, the little things help make a big difference. And Hugo was saying that too as well. So it's the why factors. It's the little details about the why you're doing it that really help you um, in a nutshell become much better quicker. So Mario, let's, let's, is, there, is there some comments on here that we need to start first up here that, was, that has not been addressed? Mm -hmm. So I don't read Spanish, so I didn't know, you know. Um, can you, can you uh, show the, the comments? Okay. Bueno, Mario, ¿cuánto tiempo crees que te un aprendiz para sacar golpes de puerta? La, laqueados perfectos. Mira, entonces aquí tenemos una pregunta de César Muñoz. Gracias, César, por tu pregunta. Eh, mira, César, yo te puedo decir una cosa. El, el tiempo es variable de acuerdo a la disciplina de cada persona en entender cada error que tiene para que no vuelva a suceder. Esto quiere decir que cuando uno tiene golpes laqueados en puertas, se debe a que, o sea, se debe a que precisamente el golpe estaba muy agudo, ¿ok? Entonces, si tenemos un golpe agudo y digamos que cometemos un error en el que no podemos sacarlo en una ocasión y lo afrontamos de la misma forma, pues evidentemente no vamos a tener un progreso, ¿sí? Es decir, en la medida que yo vaya entendiendo el movimiento de metal para aprender de esa situación, y, digamos, en una próxima oportunidad, saber qué herramienta puedo utilizar, cómo puedo mejorar. Y cada vez probándome a mí mismo en esa situación, voy a eh, tener una mejor posibilidad de una 
de una reparación con estándares de calidad, ¿sí? No hay un tiempo específico porque cada persona tiene una curva de aprendizaje diferente, pero este, o sea, esa, ese acercamiento que se tiene es importante siempre en toda situación. Hey Mario, I hate to cut you off, dude, but like we got a lot of questions to ask, so we got to keep it super short, dude. So, yeah. okay. Um, dense pricing on beginners. So it, it starts at 110. Honestly, there's another option and there's called ground zero PDR training. Again, if you use that code beginners, uh, you'll save 20% off. That's $197. You can go in there unlimited. Okay. It's a huge library of, uh, beginning, uh, ways to, to start a dent, finish a dent, glue pulling, all that stuff. But that's included if you do a subscriber and you could show you have access to a ton of more videos and then you get access to the dent tool discounts. So, okay. So that was my question in American. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Mario? I think uh, there was another person that asked in Spanish. All right. Uh, another one. Hola, amigos. Ahora soy estancia y tipos de elementos que se están utilizando. Okay. Se pueden vender. Mira, entonces están preguntando si en Costa Rica se pueden vender. Mira, eh, lo que debes hacer es buscar un proveedor. O sea, las, los lugares que nosotros damos en los links se pueden utilizar, ¿vale? Pero eh, debes o sea, tener en cuenta que esa, ese proveedor envíe directamente a Costa Rica, ¿sí? Eh, es la única forma que, que, se, que se puede. Hoy en día hay correos internacionales como DHL o UPS, entonces eso no tiene inconveniente, ¿vale? Eh, hay algunos lugares donde tienen, o sea, como un tercero que puede utilizar eh, un casillero en donde puedes enviar la herramienta, digamos, a Miami y de ahí te puede llegar directamente a Costa Rica. Espero poder haber respondido la consulta. Boy, the Spanish always take that like is it like way more elaborate? Is that what it is, Mario? Yeah, it's it's really elaborate. You, know, it's, you guys always do extra. You guys are always extra, you know. So yeah. <laughs> it's part of uh our Miguel's like, yeah, I know what you guys you, uh yeah, we're we're funny, dude. So let's see. Marco Antonio, hi guys, my name is Marco, the dent artist from Ohio, Cleveland. Well, Mark, welcome, Marco. We appreciate that, dude. Um, Mario, how about uh, what's this one right here? ¿Cómo funciona el descuento de compra de herramientas? Um, he's asking for the discount, how it works. Okay, uh, Autobo Pits, mira. Entonces funciona en un tiempo limitado de hoy hasta antes del primero de febrero. El código es que es el que se ve en pantalla. Al momento en el que hagan el registro, ponen ese código y tienen 20% de descuento, ¿vale? Tienen un acceso completo a todos los cursos en español y asimismo cursos en inglés, dependiendo de lo que ustedes escojan, ¿no? Entonces, es básicamente eso. Did you already answer this one? En la reflexión de los... All right. Tools, right? Saul, Saul Pagan. En la reflexión de los yo compré una de Van Tools, pero la, las partes de los pagan más flexible. Okay, uh, he's asking me if uh, it's better a light stand or a stocky uh, reflection board. Uh, mira, lo que yo te podría decir es que el, el stand generalmente abarca un área mucho más grande del de daño, ¿sí? Sin embargo, el stand te quita un poco de versatilidad, ¿sí? El stand es más, es, ocupa más espacio, el stand tiene que ir... Eh, o a una batería o tiene que ir a la pared con una toma corriente. Entonces, la, la opción de esto aquí es que puede cargarse una batería, uno puede mover el borde donde uno quiera y puede utilizarlo eh, con la chupa agregándola donde uno necesite y perfectamente puede tener más versatilidad. Puedes empezar con una o puedes, eh, digamos, eventualmente ver la necesidad si necesitas un stand. Aparte de eso, el stand es un poco más caro. Entonces, ten en cuenta eso y yo considero que las Tuki es una buena opción que te va a dar versatilidad y puedes trabajar. Yo trabajé mucho tiempo con eh, ese tipo de iluminación empezando y e hice todo tipo de golpes. Entonces, eh, empezando es una buena opción. Mira, eh, en esta tarde, 
Okay, we we got uh, uh, Andres. He's going to MT. I would like to participate in the Dent Olympics that are held there. <laughs> okay, Andres, mira. Eh, pues buenísimo, excelente. Esas, esas Olimpiadas son eh, una prueba de, de técnica, presión. Y pues si estás ahí, sería espectacular. Creo que para inscribirse eh, lo puedes hacer a través de la página de MT y de esa forma puedes estar ahí compitiendo. ¿sí? Eh, creo que tienes que pagar por ahí unos 120 dólares, 100, 100 dólares para inscribirte. Entonces, eso hay que tenerlo en cuenta. All right. Juan well, Mario, you ready to, um, ready to get some tools away? Okay, absolutely. That's the best part. <laughs> it is the best part. Okay. Um, how should we do it? I'm going to give some of these new tips away right here from. Uh, vamos a, a darles, o sea, los que está, han estado aquí con nosotros, vamos a dar estos tips. Okay. Vamos a dar estos tips. Good. He said, Mike's so desperate to hear the Mario explain in English. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Miguel's funny, dude. I, I, you, you didn't meet Miguel, huh, Mario? Oh, yeah. Um, Mario? Oh, it's... great. Mario, at least he's smiley. He got frozen smile, dude. So, are we still on? It's complicated to there explain Spanish, absolutely. Yeah. Different vocabulary. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's. This is the last. Like everybody's going. This is the now. Here comes everybody. All right, how about this? Shoot, what's the what's the giveaway? You see these comments coming in, Mario? What's that one? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, how que punta usar? Espérate que es que se me se me fue. Do I read back? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, una punta para bajar los morros de los golpes. Efectivamente, hay muchas en el mercado. Nosotros habíamos hablado de si se está empezando una punta plástica en donde eh, pueda, probablemente puede haber una, una forma redonda, una forma eh, más aguda y una forma media. Realmente se puede utilizar esa, siempre estar pendiente de pulir la punta para que no haya marcar el metal y de esa forma poder trabajar la reparación, poder, poder trabajar cada situación, ¿sí? Eh, pero para identificar la punta, siempre debes tener en cuenta que cuando estás empezando y tienes unos morros grandes, no vas a empezar con la punta más aguda, ¿no? Tienes que empezar con la punta más eh, grande, es decir, la que ocupa más espacio. Y en la medida que se va avanzando, pues va uno con la punta más aguda. Ok, and last one before, so we can get in to get some giveaways, so, because I want to go, I want to get off here before dinner. Dude. Mira, so, eh, before preferiblemente tomorrow. utilizar silicona fría de caliente. La silicona fría o caliente se puede utilizar en distintas aplicaciones, ¿sí? <laughs> La silicona fría mueve puntualmente un área del daño sin, sin forzar demasiado el metal. Si uno quiere utilizar un tap grande, que va eh, con una silicona cálida, va a tener mucha más presión y agarre. Esto puede sobreestirar el metal, depende de cada situación. Generalmente la silicona fría es una opción eh, mucho más versátil, rápida, que puede mover mucha área del daño sin necesidad de forzar el metal. Entonces, dependiendo de cada situación, Hey, hey, let me know what he's saying in Spanish, in, in Spanish so I know a little bit. And in our audience, remember, we got English audience, too. Oh, so. yeah. I, I think we, we have a majority of, of our audience. Uh, well, from part, listen, I, I, I know Americans like to retract. They don't really ask as many questions. Even when I'm doing a solid English yeah, yeah. podcast, they, you know, they, unless it's, you know, it's, it's, it's portrayed. But when it comes to tools, a lot of people don't like to, like, He was asking me. He was asking me. Their vulnerability. So go ahead. <laughs> he was asking me what was um, a better option on um, using uh, cold glue or um, hot glue, oh. and in which occasions will be better. You know. Okay. I think what Mario, what we need to do honestly is just have a strictly questions and answers session, or you yeah. should. You know what I mean? Jump on here in the future, and we'll 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 arrange it. Oh yeah, we will go on that. Yeah. Um, let me let me just do some stuff giveaway because I, I think everybody's coming in here. The the bar you took last. Oh, uh, okay. So Louis, 
Luis is asking me about this um, this flat bar. That was not a dent craft. That's actually a, a uh, modified uh, flat bar from Ultra, and they cut the uh, the round part off, and then they welded a, a tip on there, a screw-on tip. So you could ask them to do that and say, hey, make that same one that Mike Toledo had uh, at the meetup, and they will take good care of you, okay? Yeah. So that was strictly from um, from from Ultra. Um, Hugo says, uh, I'm Portuguese, so I understand Spanish. So, yeah, you're right at home, Hugo. So, hey, Hugo's here no matter what. English, Spanish, he's here. Um, <laughs> same with Miguel. Uh, listen, I want to give away some tools, right? Let's let's give us some tools. Um, if you can, if you're, if you're, if you win and you're in, uh, you're in Spanish, you send the address to Mario and then Mario will send it to me. Mm -hmm. I will send it out. Okay. I'm not giving away big tools because I, 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 it's going to be super expensive to send it to you. So we'll just use some very cool tips that you guys can use and a reflection board, a line board reflection mm -hmm. board. with a, with a, with a price guide on the back. I mean, I'm not sure how useful it'll be for you over in, um, uh, in, in besides the United States, but heck, you can put something else on the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Mark, how, do you, how do you want to get? How about? Um, gosh, you you make up a make up a game. I didn't even think about it. anybody. You guys make a game. If you guys come up with a good way to make a game out of this, I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a tip. So, <laughs> let's go. Vamos a qué qué nos podemos inventar para entregar estas herramientas. Uh, okay, maybe if we ask a question about the seminar, do you think the, the right answer will be the first one? Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Let's do it. Who's, who? Go ahead. Uh, say that? Okay, vamos a, para la entrega de herramientas, vamos a hacer una pregunta. I'm going to do that later, Vince. But go ahead. Yeah. Vamos a hacer una pregunta sobre el seminario. Ah, mira, eh, Vince... Last common wins. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Tim Green beat, beat him to that. So Tim's always in the mix too. So Tim, yeah, you get one of these tips, dude. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something. Uh, I'm going to give you one of these new uh, blunt tips, which is freaking awesome. This tip is like my midpoint pushing tip. It's hard to see. I know mine might be a little, come on, a little blurry. Okay. Anyway, so that's going to go to Tim. Tim, message me. Um, go ahead, Mario. Who's who's going? Um, okay, la, la, la pregunta, the question. Um, uh, how about last last how, last how, last per, last comment wins? So you guys can keep commenting all you want. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's one. How about the last, wins, comment but wins? Let, the last comment? Let's wins. go on the question. What do you think? Let's go ask the question. Okay, let's ask a question. Okay. So last okay. comment wins this when we leave. Okay. What right. was the length of the door tool that we show on the video? Yep. What was the length of the door tool that we showed on the video? You. Cuál, you cuál fue la, one el one. largo eh, one las pulgadas de la herramienta que se mostró en el video de la herramienta de puertas. Entonces, ojo ahí. Amar, let's see. Huh. Okay, this gentleman won right here. Yeah. 22 inch. Yeah, let him know that in Spanish to message you, and we will send him a pack of glue with a sharp tip. Okay. Okay, mira. Pack of glue tabs. Uh, I'm sorry, pack of glue tabs. Auto pits un caramanga. Un tap, unos taps de silicona. Ganador auto pits. Ahí estás. You're gonna have to make some notes, Mario, so I know who to send it to. Send them the right ones. Okay. This, this question Mario is about to answer, ask, is going to be this tip set right here, okay? This is all sponsored from Anson as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Freaking top-notch stuff. You're going to oh, love yeah. these tips, right? So we're giving away these tips They're right here. Metal tips? It's metal tips, but if you notice, there's a, there's, a, there's a little bit. This one's kind of, a, what do you call it? Um, it's spiky. It's got a spiky huh? tip in there. You know nice. I mean? you don't have, do you have some of these yet, Mario? No, hell no. No, mames. What the hell? <laughs> I'm going, dude. What's wrong with know. you, man? What the hell? <laughs> I need to participate okay. in this. All right. How about this? Game. I'll, I'll, I'll put it down, okay? Um, so, uh, 
what what next uh, what's you next mean? all right all right what is it which is it better to practice on the hood or the door que es mejor practicar en la puerta o en el capó There we go. Let's see if they we got people listening. You can't hey, you can't sorry gentlemen. We only have a certain amount of you're right. Uh, I'm waiting for the next one. Okay, you listen. I'm giving people a chance to win here, okay? Ulysses and Luke. Ulysses. He was right. Auto auto pits was right again, but I'm only giving like one 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 winner. Okay. So you congratulations, Ulysses. Don't forget to message Mario. Let him know he won these. Okay. Message me. Message me. And let me know what you won. Okay. Message. Did you talk to him in Spanish? Let him know to message you. Yeah. Um, en es, en español, o sea, te estás llevando unos tips metálicos eh, que sirven para empujar o nivelar. Y es excelente. Muchas gracias por participar, Ulises. Muchas gracias. Okay. Good. Um, which reflection is better? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll be there all day, dude. All right. Which all right. reflection? Oh, uh, name, name that. Name the light that I was showing with lines and fog. Go ahead, Mario. Tell them. Eh, menciona las, the, the lines you told me. Hurry up, everyone's gonna in English is gonna freaking get it before the Spanish can understand it. So yeah. Uh cuáles son las líneas que se utilizaron en, en la reflexión de luz que mostraron de la iluminación LED. You know what? I'm gonna send you a uh, I'm gonna send you a private chat for the next question, dude. So that way you can you can All right. see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Good try, Will. Nope. So we, we that was a good question. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm surprised nobody's nobody's nailing that one, dude. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, it was not mentioned. Yet. It was mentioned. <laughs> We're gonna get this one. Nope. Nothing. Nope. I mean, there is still a. I'll put up the right answer. <laughs> I think. Hugo. Hugo won. Good job, Hugo. Okay, here you go. Dang. Okay. Hey, message me, Hugo, again. You know the dealio. You, that's not your first time winning, dude. So make sure you message me. Okay. And uh, da, da, da. okay, Mario, your turn. You say it in Spanish and then English as fast as you can. So I know. Why don't you send me a comment, private chat, dude? Mm -hmm. Oh, you have an idea what yeah. it is? I got, uh, I got two more. I got two more things, and then we're doing the last comment wins the line board. You make sure you tell them that. Can you please tell them that? The last comment wins this board. El, el último comentario gana el board. Último comentario gana el board, señores. Último comentario gana el board. Ojo. Entonces, tienen que comentar. Tienen que comentar hasta que nosotros definamos. Uh, they have to come in until we decide is the last one. So, yep. Yep, the last comment wins that board. Okay. Heck with it. I'm gonna give the, the pair of these to the last person. What's the What's the question? What's the What's the contest, dude? <laughs> Look at me, 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 me. Last question. <laughs> yeah. What's the last question for this? They win the They win the pair. Uh, let's Let's make a, a tough one, Mike. Um. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see. Um, you gotta say it quick, and then say you can say it in English too. Uh huh. I I have to say it quick. Yeah. Um, you guys are fast. Yeah. Really. Huh? Uh, let's go on. Um, what? Mm, uh, what's the? Uh, what's the purpose? of the wedge that we showed on uh, the video. It has two purposes, right? ¿Cuál es el, el, el uso de la cuña que se mostró en el video? 
tanto, o sea, de las dos opciones que se podían hacer. Do you get the question, Mike? No. My English, my Spanish is no comprende. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the application of the wedge that we show on the, on the video? The, the two applications. Oh, good job, dude. Y, yeah, they have to, they have to explain well. Tienen que explicar muy bien esto. So I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna count. I'm gonna put the countdown, dude. Oops. Check this out. Last comment, dude. <laughs> Lesson. Oops. I actually, shoot. I, I meant to do this, dude, a little bit. I, I let me let me let me fix that, dude. We'll put that down. Actually, the let's do let's do one minute. We'll do that when we're ready. Okay. One minute. Yeah. When we're ready. I <laughs> In the last 10 I seconds. Ultra. I want to say thank you very much to Anson as well. If you guys haven't checked out their online uh, superstore, check that out. AnsonPDR.com is where you can buy freaking probably 90% of tools out there, dude. Okay. Um, also want to give some shout outs to Ultra Dent Tools. They are a big help in a lot of things that we do. And um, Dentcraft has, has really participated a lot this year, too. So thank you. Uh, we're trying to get them on board for the uh, tool discounts page. So I'm working on that. I'll see probably have some meetings. Hopefully I can nail them down over there at uh, MTE, but they'll be super busy. But uh, did anybody win, Mario? Uh, I, I, I cannot see the comments. Oh, there. There. Let me see. Let me see. What, what was the first one? You should be able to see it in the comments box over there on your right, dude, on your screen. No? No, it doesn't appear. Okay. Uh, so yeah. what was the question to me, to ask me again? Tell the, me what the, it was. The question was, what is the application of the wedge that we show on the video? What do you mean? It has, it has two purposes, right? Oh, yeah. So is anybody saying anything? Yeah, I, I think I saw oh, 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 somebody said something right here, but did anybody say anything before him? Okay. Uh, I think, I think a uh, person, no, yeah, go, go, uh, the first one. Uh, this yeah, one? to open space on the door and the glass. I, I know damaging the glass uh -huh. and help to uh, open the, um, the dust. Uh, yeah. He's, so he, you got he, it right? Did he get it yeah, right? he got it right. He got it right. Okay, Jose, Jose you, you got, you, dude, you got it. You, you got this. Message Mario. I'll put this over here. He's got the pack. Mario, you're going to have to just make sure you, you got Jose. 15%. Okay, you need to give me a, a list so I, I put it down there, okay? All right, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, down. Go ahead. we have come down to our last one minute here. One minute. Last comment wins. All right. I just want to comment wins. Último much. comentario gana, señores. Comunidad Don't Latina, forget. pendientes. Don't forget to join gentrainer.com, okay? And not only that, use that code, beginners, 20% off. El código, señores, el código para el descuento del 20%. Aprovechenlo. Realmente vale la pena. Last comment de mucho valor. Go. Why? <laughs> that, that last countdown here. Oh, yeah. That um, keyboard is in fire. It's on fire. It's on fire. <laughs> we, we get it, man. Yeah. There. Thanks, Mike and Mario, for the info. You guys got it, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Look at some comment. Hola, hola. I... <laughs> Someone says I. <laughs> Doesn't yeah, matter your language. Down. This goes down. I'm, I'm just clicking the button wherever it's there. Okay. When this goes zero, I'm clicking this. I'm clicking it. Now uh -huh. there's a lot. On, on zero, make sure. Three. Uh oh. It almost done. Uh -oh. 15 seconds. Uh oh. 15 seconds. Here we go. Yes, it will do. Yes, it will do. Whatever my feet are, dude. Ocho. Five. Four. Three, Ojo. Two, Tres, uno, 
Boom. Cero. Ahí fue. Louis. Ahí fue. Ok. Louis Vegas. One, dude. Luis Villegas. I think he's he's yeah, I think I met I met him already. So um why don't you message me, dude? You got yourself a board and keep them prices up, dog. Keep them prices up, man. Congratulations, <laughs> guys. All right. DM me, message me, or just uh yeah, just message me on here and uh, I'll get this sent out to you. Uh, I might not get it sent out to your packages on uh, this week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mario and I are going to be in Florida, so when I get back, I will send out your your winnings. Okay, so thank you very much again for participating. I hope you guys found this valuable, and I hope it was uh, interesting. I, and thank you for being patient on during the uh, up and downs of the uh, segment here. I'll get that fixed for sure uh, next time. So thanks again for watching. Have a Muchas good one. Hasta Muchas luego. gracias. Say, say it, Mac, in Spanish. Muchas gracias. Mucho gracias. Hasta la vista. <laughs> it? Hey, how you like my accent? Dude? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's uh, one step, one step. <laughs> one step. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Gracias. Take care. Okay.